So I'm a professor of social change. And what I want to do is to introduce you to three of my former students. This is Abby Waymimo. He grew up in the slums of Lagos, Nigeria, his family living paycheck to paycheck. Today, he's the co-founder and CEO of a billion-dollar unicorn startup called Isuzu. Isuzu helps families in poverty report their rent payments to credit bureaus to lift themselves out of their current economic circumstances. On the gov side of things, this is Dinora Kantu. During the pandemic, she was the chief innovation officer of the city of San Pedro Garza de Garcia in Mexico. As we know, during the pandemic, too many victims of domestic abuse were confined to small houses and apartments with their abusers. So she used digital technology to build a chatbot called SAM to allow victims of domestic abuse to silently call for help, thereby th saving hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. This is Allie, Allie Claire. She co-founded and runs a humanitarian startup called Recoded. She works in the DP camps of Yemen and Turkey and, and Iraq, working with Syrian refugees, primarily with women, teaching them IT skills. 85% of the students that she's worked with now have gone on to good paying IT jobs in the tech sector. So what's different about these mission driven leaders, people from the dot com, the dot org and the dot gov worlds? They possess a set of skills. They have the ability to take a project from idea to implementation using new technology, using data, and also using the technology that helps them talk to and learn from the communities that they're trying to help. These skills help them to make a dent in the universe and allow them not only to come up with an innovation, with a good idea or with an invention, but to really take that idea to fruition so that they can actually make a measurable difference in people's lives. So I want to talk to you today about what those skills are that they possess. What some of those things that we each need to learn if we want to become more successful change makers and mission driven leaders. If we want to know how to implement our passion projects using data and community wisdom. Skills that I might add, we are too rarely taught, either in school or on the job. So the most successful change maker really knows how to define a measurable, actionable, and specific problem. That's a process and a skill that requires, if you will, peeling back the layers of the onion from a much bigger issue into really understanding the root causes of a problem and what's actually driving it. As we all know, if the problem, the reason why people don't wear masks is that they don't have access to affordable PPE, that's going to open up one solution. If, by contrast, the root cause of why somebody's not wearing a mask is political disinformation and misinformation that they've read on social media, we need a different set of solutions. So the successful change maker really knows how to identify that specific problem that they want to solve. And that skill of problem definition often involves rethinking the problem from the get go. So that instead of just defining the problem, for example, as the elevator is too slow, which would necessitate a million dollar new engine for the elevator, they might turn the problem on its head and realize that the problem is that the wait is too long, thereby opening up the idea of buying a $5 mirror or playing some music in the elevator to help address the challenge. Now, really defining the problem also involves today in the 21st century mastering the skills of data analytical thinking. How do we know where the problem is occurring, who it affects and when it's happening? That's what's happening with Peta Banchana in Indonesia, in India and Florida, where they engage residents in using new technology and social media to pinpoint occurrences of flooding. When they combine citizen reported data with government data, they're able to target scarce resources to help save lives in flooding conditions. But to understand the true nature of a problem, we can't just look at the data from 10,000 feet. We actually have to get really down in the, in the nitty gritty and understand how people experience the problem. We have to learn the skills of what some people call human centered design to talk to and ask and listen to the people affected by the problem about why it's actually occurring. That's what the NGO Code for America does, and it's why they won the TED Audacious Prize this year. 
is because they've helped the state of California understand why it is that people were leaving money lying on the table, not taking advantage of the food stamp benefits that were available to them. By really asking people, they understood that the process of applying for food stamps was incredibly cumbersome. It was 100 questions long and 50 web screens. Now they've been able to reduce that process to 10 minutes and allow many more people to take advantage of the benefits to which they're entitled. The successful change maker and problem solver doesn't just know how to define a problem. They also know how to go look for solutions by talking to people who are, again, affected by the problem, who often have the best ideas about how to solve it. By tapping into the lived experience and wisdom of residents in our communities, we can often uncover the best ideas. That's what we're doing now at the Burn Center in Oakland, California, together with the City of Oakland and the Oakland Fund for Public Innovation and Mills College. We're asking residents in Oakland, how do we solve the intractable challenges of urban blight, of gun violence, of homelessness? This is the 13th city where we're now turning to the use of new technology to ask residents not only what the problems are, but how we should solve them and again, implement those solutions. But we don't always have to go look for new ideas. Solutions for what works are often already out there. So we have to complement the engagement that we might do with a set of skills that help us to look for, look systematically for what may already have been tried what's working, and whether what's working somewhere else could be something we can borrow in our own community. So for example, in the UK, they are now using in the Good Sam project, defibrillators and open data and cell phones to help match people experiencing cardiac arrest with people who have training in CPR. Whether it's an off-duty doctor or nurse or just you and me trained by the Red Cross and how to perform CPR and use a defibrillator, this is a fantastic idea that's saving lives. Is it a new idea? No. They stole the idea, if you will, from the Pulse Point Project out of California, where they have saved 175,000 lives doing the same thing. Do we care that the idea is new? Not at all, so long as it works. We also need not only to be able to define a problem, come up with solutions for a problem, we have to be able to implement those solutions in practice. And that's where learning how to partner with people across sectors, whether it's universities or businesses or governments, learning how to work together with passionate communities of people who want to make change happen is so important for accelerating our pathway to social impact. But knowing how to partner with people, putting mission-driven public interest causes at the center of what we do is not something we necessarily know how to do. And yet it's something we can learn. We can learn from the example of what they've done in Helsinki now, where they're trying to reduce their carbon emissions and move towards a decarbonized economy by 2035, and where they are partnering across all sectors to identify and set 147 climate goals, collect data about those goals, and using new technology to track the accomplishment of those goals. They couldn't do this working with one sector alone. Everybody has to collaborate. Finally, if we want to make change happen, we have to not only define a problem and come up with solutions and implement that solution, we have to be able to measure what works. And we need to do that faster than we've ever done it before because we don't have time to waste. We need to know what's not working and to stop doing it and to scale and expand what is working. We have wonderful new technologies available to us today to gather and analyze more data than ever before using AI and machine learning. But you don't always need new technology to do it. Across India, they are doing what they call social auditing projects. That is to say, getting people together in the town square to talk about projects that are underway and ask people, is this working? to ask people the payments that people are supposed to be receiving under a new policy, are you actually getting them? Or are we building bridges to nowhere and paying dead people on the payroll and are things not working? So I think there is a set of skills that we can learn and that we can master that can help us go from idea to implementation. Of course, skills by themselves are not enough. We have to first start by doing things that matter, by embracing 
public problem solving and tackling things that are important and matter to real people, to our environment, and to our society to make it a better place. But if what we want to do is to enable more people to make a difference against the many challenges, whether it's climate change or racial injustice or economic inequality, the many challenges that we need to tackle today. There are two things that I think we can do to expand the number of public problem solvers in our world today. So let me close by offering two ways that we can get from here to there and dramatically expand the number of problem solvers. So eager to become the next Mark Zuckerberg, over the last decade, more than 1,600 universities and colleges have started programs in entrepreneurship, in how to start a business. But we don't want anymore to move fast and break things. What we want to do, what we must do, is to move faster and to fix things. Therefore, I would put to you, we need to complement that teaching of entrepreneurship now, the teaching of how to start a business, with teaching the skills of public problem solving, with teaching what I would call public entrepreneurship, how to take a mission-driven project from idea to implementation, how to master these skills so that more people who want to do good in the world can do good. And if we do that, I think we're also doing students a favor because employers have time in and time again said the most important skill that people can learn today to be successful in the job market is the skill of complex problem solving. So we can do well by doing good, making a dent in the universe and making a living at the same time. But we have a lot of problems to tackle and we can't wait until today's leader, until today's student becomes tomorrow's leaders. We also have to train today's leaders, whether it's in government or whether it's in companies, to actually also become public problem solvers. Can you imagine that government in this country, whether it's federal, state, or local, is our largest employer and yet has no training strategy? There's plenty of courses and content available out there, but we're not teaching people in government the skills that I showed you, how to be more agile, how to be more data-driven, how to use human-centered design to get better and faster and more successful at solving a problem with communities and leading to real impact. So we need to do a better job of training people, not only, again, in universities, but also in government and in business and in our institutions to become public problem solvers. People want to learn these skills, in my experience. So let me close by saying that instead of assuming that social innovators are born or somehow magically you know, birthed whole cloth as creative leaders, I believe social impact is learnable, and we can enable anyone and everyone to master the skills of public problem solving in their own communities to become more successful at making social change happen. For every one of the Abbeys and Denoras and Allies that I meet, I meet 10 more people who want to make a difference, who care about their community, who care about our planet, who want to tackle the issues that we all read about in the newspaper today. But they don't have the capacity to make a difference. They don't really know where to start. We can't expect to tackle tomorrow's problems with yesterday's toolkit. We have myriad challenges that we must address now. And so we urgently need to equip ourselves with the skills to do so. Our democracies demand this of us, to enable more citizens, more people, who can move from demanding change to actually making it happen in practice. We have to help more people to take an initiative from idea to reality. We can all do good, but today it's incumbent upon us to all do better urgently. Thank you.